So I got to ask you, now that you've been through all this loss, the trauma, the grief from the trauma that you experienced, whether it was long term, long time coming or a sudden loss. My question for you is, who are you? And I want to bring to mind the big worm in Alice in Wonderland who blows the smoke through the hookah. Who are you? When we've been widowed or when we've had a major loss in our lives, we have a tendency to really cling to the identity of the person that we once were when we had that person in our lives. <clears throat> Excuse me. Part of that loss is losing that sense of self that we had when the person was alive. That's a big part of the grief. We didn't just lose the person. We lost who we were with that person. That's a whole other thing <laughs> to have to grieve. And if you haven't considered that yet, take some time to sit in it. Because if you haven't been able to put your finger on why you're having such a hard time with this, you've got to sit with that reality for a little while. Who am I now? Who am I now that that person's gone? I'm no longer caring for them. I'm no longer cooking for them. I'm no longer talking to them. I'm no longer sharing certain things about myself. I'm no longer stuck in a certain way of being because of the obligations of the relationship. Some people have a lot more complication when somebody dies because life wasn't perfect when the person was alive. Some people had it really good, but not everybody does. So I'll do a different post about that. So if you're new to my work, hello, welcome out there in YouTube, Facebook, wherever land. My name is Sevilla. I love and I am a licensed therapist with over 20 years of experience and I'm also a spiritual intuitive and I use those talents, skills and abilities to work with my clients very intently and closely to help them get to the heart of what it is that's holding them back from having more joy and more freedom in their life. Not sitting in that sticky mud of grief anymore and being able to really truly move forward out of it. And a lot of that starts with our spiritual understanding of where we've been, why we've been there and what we can do with it moving forward. And I help with that. I specialize in grief and loss because I've had a ridiculous amount of it myself. So when you're trying to come to terms with the fact that you're going to have to remake yourself, then that also comes with taking certain steps in your life. And one of those is taking risks, taking risks to do things differently than you've done them before, taking risks to reach out for help in places where you may not have needed to, wanted to, or had to before. And so who are you now that you're in a bit of a needy position? It's not an easy place to be in. Or maybe after your loss, you had a fantastic life insurance policy and now you have more wealth than you've ever had before and you don't know what to do with it. <laughs> you don't know where to start. Or maybe the loss put you in a destitute situation and you'd never been destitute before, but now you are because you weren't prepared. All of these situations leave you with this empty space of WTF. What do I do? What do I do? Even if you're years out from the loss, many people are still in this situation a long time out because they have not been able to make any changes. And now they're sitting at this precipice in their life going, okay, I'm really ready to do something different. Or I think I am. 
Do I want to date again? Do, do I want to sell my house? Do I want to move forward? Do I want to go back to school? I mean, I've got friends that have gone back to college in their 50s and 60s and started a whole new career. It can be done. You're never too old to do something different. Unless you want to be an NBA star, then you might be too old. <laughs> we have to have relevant goals, but many things are possible. So this process of remaking ourselves really starts up here first. And that's being able to remove barriers that we believe hold us back. So if you're telling yourself a story about a situation that hasn't happened yet, about how bad it'll be, how difficult it will be. If I meet someone new, they're not going to accept the fact that I've been widowed. Who could love me because I still love my late husband? I still love my late wife. Who could handle the grief that I've been through, the struggles that I've had? So I just won't try. Some of you, that's your story. And it's okay. But if you want to change that, if you want to do it differently, you can. It's possible. I help teach people how to do that. But you've got to be ready for it. You've got to be willing to be able to open up to the spiritual purpose and the pain and the loss that you've been through because it's not without reason. Now, I'm not telling you well, the good Lord has a plan for everybody and you know, maybe this was for the best. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is that because it happened, because it sucked horribly, you now have a choice to sit in the misery of it for the rest of your life and allow it to freaking destroy you. All hope and joy and possibility for the future. Or allow it to keep you being a hermit or keep you from loving anyone else again, keeping you from enjoying any more children again if you've lost a child, being able to have another relationship with an elder if you've lost a parent. You know, these fears that hold us back that I could get hurt. Oh, I could get hurt. I can't do that. I could get hurt again. You bet your ass you could get hurt again. Yes, you can. I know, because I've had it happen over and over and over and over again. But there is a resilience in you that allows you to fully step into your humanness, which is the core of resiliency. We haven't survived for the eons and eons and eons that we've survived because we're weak beings. We are powerful beyond measure. We are weak only when we allow ourselves to be conquered from the inside out. Sometimes we can't control for the, ex the external circumstances in our life. Okay? We can't control that there's a, a pandemic going on. We can't control that there's violent people in the world. We can't control for anything outside of ourselves, really. But how powerful can you be inside here, inside here? You can be. And that, my friends, can literally change everything for you. Have you ever heard somebody say, well, I've been traveling around the world and gosh, those poor people in the other country, they're so happy. How could they be so happy with so little? You ever heard somebody say that? Now, this doesn't justify saying, hey, you know, poverty is great. Let's just let everybody be poor because they're happy. Okay, I'm not going to get into a big social justice argument because I get those, right? I I understand that. But what I want to say is that if you have read Viktor Frankl's book, Man's Search for Meaning, I highly recommend it if you haven't read it yet. Viktor Frankl was a man who lived through the Holocaust and through the worst of the concentration camps. And he survived it to write about it, to write about man's ability to survive and what it is that helps him to do that. And he gets to the core of that human strength that is within all of us and how he tapped into it so he could survive. Now, our situations are not nearly that dire, no matter how terrible they are, no how much terrible it feels. 
but you have that same strength in you. How do you tap into that? I help with that. So it's important to know that you're not without hope and you're not without means, no matter how dire your situation might be. No matter how close you are or far away from your loss you might be, when you're sitting on the precipice of recreating a life from any stage, that means that you're now in the mindset to be able to say to yourself and to others, I think I'm ready to take a step. Or I've already taken 10 steps, but then I kind of stalled out. Now I'm ready to take the leap. What is it you're wondering about? Is it okay for me to love someone again? Is it okay for me to be able to go and really enjoy life again? Should I be feeling guilty when I'm happy? My loved one's six feet underground and here I am laughing. Is that okay? Now, in all my years of study as a spiritual intuitive, lifetime of studies, joy, Joy is our natural state or a state that we always want to strive towards because joy is the state of the spirit and the spirit is that which we are that animates this physical body that we live in. And so always coming back to the joy, finding our way back to the joy, finding our way back to love. That is the reality, that is the essence of what we are. That's a goal. And that's a goal that I help with. If you would like help with that, you're welcome to message me or connect with me. All of you know that wherever you're at right now, there is potential, there's hope. You've just gotta be able to uncover it because it's there. You are a mine of inestimable gems. From Sevilla, I love to all of you out there. Remember to like this video, to please subscribe to my channel if you like it, and to make a comment below. I'd love to hear your thoughts.